there. My name is Kendrick, and today I get to have Xavier back. So welcome back, Xavier. Thank you, Kendrick. <laughs> yeah, so Xavier, can you please tell us your full type? Sure. Um, so I'm an ESTJ jumper, and my full type is double feminine, T-E-N-E, -E, play, consume, blast, sleep. And I've, I've not been officially social typed, but I believe I'm a four. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, I think David Shan did say that people can self-type themselves for social type. It's not like a blind spot, like their OPS <laughs> code. So, uh, if you think you're a four, I think we can just go with that. Um, we'll we'll go, we'll also obviously go over the cross checks just to see if you can relate to a lot of them. But um, so how have you been since we last spoke? That was like three years ago. What was your journey <laughs> like with your personal growth and stuff? Dude, that was three years ago, and um. Yeah, I finished nursing school. Now I'm an RN. I've been an RN for two years. I also moved across the country from Buffalo to San Francisco. So I've been through a lot <laughs> since last time we talked. Wow, congratulations. And going from East Coast to West Coast, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yep, for sure. Yeah, so um, Buffalo is a beautiful city, a very friendly city, but I was just tired of like the winters, the six month long winters. And uh, yeah, I've always dreamed of coming back to California. I used to live here for three years in San Francisco and I'm back and I love it. It's beautiful. I've been hearing all those news about San Francisco's staff and stuff though. Is that it's not really like a, as big as a problem since you moved there or is it actually like noticeable? Like Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I heard that too in the news, like that there's a lot of um, crimes since I think the pandemic and um, like all of those looting and stuff that happened during uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. But um, I I don't really notice it that much. Um, my Except my l landlady, her, uh, her, one of her, what is it called? Like a carburetor, not carburetor. Uh, catalytic converter got stolen from her Prius uh, and they're like 300 bucks because and they sell them for like the metals inside or whatever so that sucked but <laughs> yeah I don't know yeah I guess it could be worse so that's not yeah like, bad, I, but it's not the worst thing I mean yeah I had some weird guy that climbed on top of my um, downstairs neighbor's van and like climbed onto our balcony which you can't get to it unless you had like a ladder you climbed on his van and he was like trying to like get into our window <laughs> but he was just some crazy guy that uh something was like accidentally mailed to our place and he was trying to get in to to get the package <laughs> oh but, uh, yeah <laughs> but besides that like we haven't had any like incidents <laughs> gotcha okay yeah. well, that's good that's good um, so why don't we start actually by discussing your journey with your SF sleep loss? Um, I know your decider sleep animal is kind of personal. So whatever you feel comfortable discussing. Um sure. but um it's like I said, it's been three years. Uh you've probably got a chance to uh take a look at your SF sleep loss a little bit more. I mean, the fact that you moved to the West Coast, that's like you decided to do that, right? So uh, yeah. Yeah. So when, what what's uh what's been going on with you with that last animal and what what have you seen for yourself? Yeah, so my last animal um Yeah, I uh I <laughs> I I admit I'm I'm pretty much addicted to play that I I like to go out and have fun. like I like to go out to the bars and have fun and like I'm working and and just working and playing and having lots of fun and not really like taking time for myself and putting on the brakes. I admit that I do that. <laughs> uh, but every, every once in a while, I'll, like remind myself like, Hey, I need to like focus on my own energy. Um, one of the things, and it's tied to decider too, is like when I'm sick, I feel like really guilty calling in sick. And I'm thinking like what the manager will judge me for calling in. Cause she, she's like made it very explicit. She doesn't want us to call it to use our sick days and um yeah but like I'm like telling myself no I deserve to call in sick I need to focus on my own health and then um yeah so I end up calling in sick but it takes me like 
at half an hour to an hour to like talk through it that it's okay that I'm allowed to call in sick when I'm sick. And even though I have like sick days too, like you're totally allowed to <laughs> use them, but it's just annoying because um, we're told that we're not supposed to call in or we're, they don't want us to call in. <laughs> gotcha. It, your, your story kind of reminds me a little bit of when I spoke to Heather, uh, your fellow ESTJ, she's standard though. Um, oh. <laughs> and then um, we, we, we were talking about, um, it was like long time ago, I had a panel of everyone in the same quadra, like we're in the same quadra, for example, so I can relate yeah. to what you're saying. And we're like very closely the similar type. Yeah, uh, we are. <laughs> yeah. So I remember when I was talking to that panel and what I noticed was like the INFPs and the ENFPs, they don't have a problem going directly to their FI, even if it's like a demon, while like the ICJ and the ESTJ, um, the ICJ, they would try to use things first, like the SI things to try to fix the FI problem. But <laughs> um, if they can't solve it, they will find help because the, you know they're still a double decider, right? But yeah. I noticed with the ESTJ, um, She's Heather said that um she would try to use exercise to fix the the FI problem, right? So she would use like a thing while else like the when Chinzia, who was also in the panel, she's the ENFP jumper, she said, No, I can just go to my feelings directly. I don't need anything to 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 explore it. Um so when I asked you about your SF sleep flash, you talk about calling in sick. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting because I feel like that's a thing. Cause like it's like the the SI first, right? Like the physical body. Um, yeah. And then it's feeling bad. But like, what about the emotional side of things? That's I'm quite curious about. Um, how's the emotional processing been going with that um, SF sleep blast of yours? Oh, emotional processing. Um, yeah, I, I've been through the ringer, like with stuff like that. Luckily, I take like Lexapro um, <laughs> to like help deal with my emotions because like, Otherwise, I get really sad and depressed, and it's no fun. It's it's terrible. So, like, I call them my happy pills, and I just take it once a day, and it helps me deal with, like, emotional, stressful situations, basically. So, like, little things that shouldn't really be a big deal, you know, it's all relative, but, like, they might make me, like, really um, mad or sad or crying like but when I'm on Lexapro it's it's just like it's like a raincoat and the and the rain just like slides off you you know like repels right. the bad emotions so <laughs> um yeah like on the Lexapro I'm pretty good and I try to like get off of it but then like I'm back to like crying over stupid things and like having these decider freak out moments and like fighting with my friend who's trying to help me, but I'm like pissed off and blaming him for stupid stuff. And like, it's no good, no bueno. <laughs> so I I do recommend Lexapro for anyone dealing with like those things if, if they want to talk to their doctor about that. But um, yeah, and then um, like processing it, I like, default mode I don't like to process it honestly like I don't like thinking about those types of things I I'm addicted to like consuming new information but like every once in a while I'll remind myself to like no I should take off my earbuds just go for a walk and um think about the things that are going on in my life and I'll do that maybe like one set once or twice a month, probably. <laughs> nice. Where I'm just like, and it's hard. It's so hard because I'm like, I hate being in my thoughts. I've always hated being in my own thoughts. I just like, because it just doesn't feel good. <laughs> and, uh, but I just force myself to do it every now and then. And, and yeah, process stuff. And it's not too bad. It's like, oh, okay, this isn't actually as bad as I make it out to be. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> no, it does. It does. Uh, you said something earlier when you go to processing your feelings and you don't like it. Is it do you feel uh, like you, you do you feel like you judge yourself for having those emotions? Like 
negative emotions about other people and whatnot. Yeah, like, yeah, I do. Like, I guess it's like not feeling like they're valid or that I, I should be doing that. Like, I shouldn't be expressing my emotions in like a negative way like that. Um, not that I should be a robot. Obviously, I'm human and have emotions, but it's kind of like not to those extreme tidal waves when they come out. You know what I mean? Like, it's too much. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, I can see that being tough. I, I'm i very, like, I have a lot of decider problems, even though I'm an observer, because I'm cranked up, like, crackhead, you know, play Blast and see him sleep. So yeah. the stuff that you're saying, I can relate, especially when I was younger, like, in my 20s, and, like, and, like, I cringe now looking back. I was like, oh, my God. I have all this, like, unprocessed emotions sometimes when I'm talking to people, and they just come out. Come out. And then it's just like, it's just so embarrassing, you know? And then, um, yeah, I like cringe at myself, like looking back, at, but you know, it, but you know, it's part of the journey, right? Like, um, yeah, yeah, it is cringy. And luckily I have good friends and I've apologized to them on yeah. like my freakouts and stuff. Like sometimes I'll do it on the Facebook groups. I'll like freak out at some random member and then, people are like, what is going on? Like, are you okay? And I'm yeah. like, I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. <laughs> or I'm just like, no, I'm pissed. I blocked them. I'm mad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's dangerous, I think. That becomes when it becomes a time bomb, right? Because you don't know when it's going to come out and it's going to come out the worst way. So Yeah, it's so embarrassing. I admit it. It's so embarrassing. It's so cringe. It's so decider and... I try not to do it. I'm more aware of it since OPS, but yeah, <laughs> it just yeah. happens. You, I, you know, it's just part of the programming, I guess. Yeah, I think that's the good thing about OPS is like now we're aware that this <laughs> this thing is happening, and it's like, oh, so if I don't address it, I'm gonna do something cringy later on, and yeah. that's even gonna be worse. So maybe I should just do it, you know, because like, you know what they say, like your last animal causes other people problems, you know? So, yeah. So when you like, like, you know, for example, you said like you go to a Facebook group and then you, something triggers you and then you block that person, right? Yeah. And it's like, I've done that during the pandemic. So, you know, the pandemic was a time when it's like a sleep process kind of moment for a lot of people. Yeah. And I remember I like cut off three friends, three friends. I cut them off. Oh, man. And then... So there was three of them. So one of them, after I cut him off, I felt horrible. I'm like, oh my God, I miss him already, you know? Aww. And then another person that I cut off, after I cut him off, I felt great. I was like, oh, maybe we were never friends. <laughs> and then, <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah, I know it's weird, right? And another person, I cut him off. I was like, I feel a little bit bad, but like, and, but I, I felt like, okay, if for some reason we get a chance to mend this, I'm open to mending it. Yeah. So it's like, I had like a, a spectrum of of emotion for different friends that I cut off. And uh the person that I cut off that I felt horrible about, we did get back a year later and uh we are good friends again. Um nice. And then the other person that said that okay, if there's a chance that we can mend it, I will be open to mending it. Uh but I'm not gonna chase after it. But I will mend it if if opportunity comes up. And it did. And uh and then now we're friends again. And then the other person, I was like I'm I'm great that we're not friends. So, um, so it's, it's kind of, so it's kind of interesting how it did it does come out eventually, um, especially during the pandemic when you're forced to sleep process. Uh, yeah. So, did you have any moments like that where, like, you know, you had to like distance yourself from certain friends and family member? I know you moved to the West Coast, so I don't know if that like means that you left a lot of your friends and family behind. But, uh, what has been your your experience like with like setting boundaries with other people? Oh, yeah, um, definitely, like, there's some people that I had to, you know, remove from my life because they're causing me, like, um, I don't know, just, like, not, not vibing with each other, I guess, different personality styles, different ways of looking at things, and it's just, I don't want to be fighting and arguing all the time when, when I'm someone's friend, and if it's like that, where everything is like a battle. I don't, it's it's probably better to just like 
take time apart for a little bit and maybe like hang out later and see what happens. But if it's, it's like a theme, then it's, it's like, no, I don't want to, you know, I, I want to have a good time with my friends. I want friends who are supportive and be supportive towards them and that sort of thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, does that answer? That was your, your question, right? Cutting out people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I try to do it in a um, adult, like, um, like talking, like, let's talk about this kind of way as opposed to the um, door slam, but <laughs> right. that's if I like, have been uh, not uh, like honest with my feelings and then you know saying things don't bother me and then it's like the last straw and then I'll do that <laughs> but right. I'm trying to be better at communicating my my needs and my feelings <laughs> if someone that is a friend of yours approaches you about like problems between you guys and they want to talk about it you know in a more adult civil way are you yeah. open to hearing feedback from them usually? Like, you know, like where, where they, where they felt like, you know, yeah. it's not working out. Yeah, right? totally. Yeah. Um, I am really, open. I, I, if they're a really good friend, definitely. Cause like we trust each other. It's good to be honest with one another, you know? And then if they're like a really good friend, then I don't think feelings are hurt as much because we're focused on, strengthening the friendship and then when you we come out of it it's like we're better friends right um when it's like someone i don't know very well and they don't really understand where i'm coming from and they're saying like issues they have with me then it it feels too criticizing and it feels unfair and so i i won't really like that you know Right. Um, if, if i feel like it's unjustified or unfair then i'm not happy but if it's you know, like a good friend and I care about them, then no matter what it is, then, you know, I'll try to rectify it or figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like you can kind of gauge where the person's coming from, where their intent is good towards you versus when the intent is something more judgmental or something negative? Now, can you, can, do you have that sense where you can tell yeah yeah um yeah like if they're coming from a good heart yeah I definitely look towards that like do they have a good heart you know or are they coming at me because they're dealing with their own like insecurities and trauma you know it it's totally different places you know and I try to be empathetic if it is coming from like trauma but at the same time it's like if if you have trauma and you're like throwing it at me, like it's, I, I don't, I don't really want that either. So, um, yeah. <laughs> now your type is super EP ish. Like you're like the most EP EJ there is, you know, cause you have the play conceit, oh, okay. which are both like gathering animals. Right. Yeah. Um, so part of SF sleep is having health routines but if you're like an EP who's like, you know, bouncing all over the place, uh, <laughs> yeah. how, how do you feel about the health routine? So I'll mention four specific ones, um, you know, exercise, eating healthy, getting enough sleep and also uh, mental health related stuff. Uh, yeah. How do you feel with your like SI when it comes to setting routines for each of those aspects? Or is it something difficult because you're like a super EP chaotic EJ, you know? Oh, yeah. Yes and no. Like being savior intuition, it's not something that I'm like super, like super duper focused about, you know, like religiously focused about. But like, um, like I always hated exercise, like my whole life. It did, like I never really liked exercise. But like, yeah, I'm like forcing myself to do it more, you know, like to better myself and I want to look better and feel better. So um, I signed up for like a gym membership this year. And originally I was going to go twice a week. And then I realized like, there's no way in hell that I have the energy to go twice a week. So I started going like, I realized I was going once a week. And even then I'm like, there's some weeks I don't even have the energy to go like once a week. So I end up going like every other week. 
But like every time I do go, I feel really good. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Because I'm thinking like, I'm barely going, maybe I should just like quit my membership. But like every time I go, I'm like, dang, like that was awesome. And well, like, it's weird. Like, it's awesome that I did it. But I also feel like shit. Like every time I go to the gym, I feel like I'm going to throw up. I feel like, yeah, I feel so drained and like, I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm doing it wrong, but like, I honestly, during my workout, I feel like I'm going to throw up and I have to like stop and then like give myself like a three, five minute break and then go at it again until I feel like I'm going to throw up and then <laughs> go at it again. <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> my buddy, my buddy, I think he's an ENTP. He's like, you're doing it wrong. You shouldn't feel like you're going to throw up. Yeah. And I'm like, no, like I need to push myself and like, go as hard as I can <laughs> like that's that's like my style like I want to work out as hard as I can oh so. I think that's why it's hard to go consistently because that's what you're thinking is going to happen when you go to the gym it's like that throwing up feeling because you're going way too hard right like because I think if you don't go enough I think you should just take it like go and go frequently but like be very easy with yourself when you work out you know yeah so, so I, I don't know like, like, yeah like just yeah, you're going I absolutely why, crazy. Like, <laughs> I, I like to push myself as hard as I can when I'm working out yeah that's just what I prefer but then it's miserable at the same time I don't know <laughs> it's crazy it's uh, irrational but <laughs> that's what I do um yeah and then you were asking about what like else eating. nutrition like, yeah nutrition yeah um so I, the main thing is like trying to drink less alcohol, which is like ideally to not drink any alcohol. Right. And um, to fix my like gut problems because I was having like severe gut problems. And then I started take, I did like the Viome. Do you know what that is? I do not. Oh, it's like this um, membership you can buy online where they like, send you a kit and then you have to send your poop to them and then they analyze your poop bacteria and That's then they crazy. tell you like what to eat and what not to eat and they give you like um probiotics and certain vitamins that you're missing and things like that so i did i do that and then it like cured my gut problems but if i ever drink alcohol it like resets it and then i have gut problems again because like the alcohol kills the bacteria like the good bacteria yeah and so like it's so bad. Like, I'm just like hurting myself. And alcohol is like a total poison. Like, it's literally a poison, you know. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I'm just like play first. And if I'm with someone who's like drinking and they're like, hey, come drink with me. And like, here, have, have, like, I'll buy you a drink. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. Like, and I'm just like uh, skidding with along with them. Right. It's hard for me to say no. And then sleep last, like, <laughs> I can't do I can't say no like to that you know and I should yeah. but then I don't want to be like um you know like because some people if if they find out you don't drink they uh this is so decider I'm sorry they, <laughs> they're like oh you're no fun like I don't want to hang out with you like you know what I mean like which you know that's their issue and I shouldn't care but I don't know yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, you're also a tester too so that doesn't help your case yeah <laughs> i know oh god yeah but um ideally i will not drink you know yeah oh, it's so hard like i wish bars so like kombucha like non-alcoholic kombucha like it's really hard to get non-alcoholic drinks that taste good at a bar you know um unless you go to some fancy cocktail bar that has mocktails i i, I don't understand the whole alcohol thing i i don't uh i don't drink so i i, I don't understand it because like i know a lot of people like i have a lot, like most of my friends drink i'm like the weird one that doesn't uh, so like when you go to a bar what do you what because i don't i i have to order a drink because it's like rude to go to, for the bartender to like if you go to a bar and you don't drink it's like it feels rude to them because they're not making money and you're taking up space that like, you know, 
they're they're losing money and they don't want you there if you're not drinking like i'm this is so decider so like i have to order something at least two drinks at a minimum so it's like <laughs> it's so hard <laughs> I mean, I guess I could just order a juice, but I don't know, or a yeah. Diet Coke, but even that's not healthy. well, I mean, okay, the first thing that came to my mind when you were saying all this stuff is I'm like, is there no alcoholic drink that doesn't kill the bacteria? That was the first thing that like I was thinking. And then the second, yeah. the second thing is like, when I go to a bar with friends, I... I just like shame all of them. <laughs> That's what I do because I'm a double decider. So I'm not scared of people, right? So I'm just like, I'm just like, why do you guys like drinking so much? Like, what do you, what do you get out of it? Do you even like it? It tastes like shit. That's what I tell them, right? <laughs> and then, oh. and then they'll just like look at me and be like, what are you talking about? Everyone drinks. I'm like, I don't, yeah. you know, I don't drink, you know, and then because I have double mask and sleep, right? So it's like, like I'm very strong with my values. So I'm like, I don't drink. I think so. It's, it's, it's a waste of money. It's bad for you, you know, <laughs> like, and then, yeah. they'll be like, and then they'll be like, well, you know, Kendrick, you need to drink to, to, to do business with people, you know, that's what like one of my friends will say, right? Oh, they're throwing the reasons at you. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll be like, well, you don't have to do business with those people that drink and if they don't like, you know, and that's what, it, and then that's kind of like what I'll say and, and stuff. But I think, I don't think people will judge you for not drinking really. It, it's just because it's like a, just a funny banter at the end of the day, in my opinion. So um, I know it's harder for some people and also certain industries you do need to drink. I understand that because I'm double deciding now, obviously, but, um, but, uh, yeah, usually I, I, I just tell my friends, like, how about we go someplace where there's no alcohol? That's what I, I just tell them usually. Like I, yeah. I, the last time I've been in a bar was 2019, I think. I haven't been in a bar since 2019. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, is that true? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I've been to a restaurant with alcohol and my friends ordered alcohol, but like I would get like a virgin drink you know yeah like a virgin mojito or something um yeah that sounds good i like that yeah but like that, that stuff that you were saying earlier about like you know all oh, the bartender has to make money you feel bad because uh you know that's how they make money and stuff yeah Dude, that that never crosses my mind when i go to the um no okay especially because i also work in like a in restaurants before where they serve alcohol and I know how much a bartender makes. I know they make a lot. Like they don't care about your little petty. Oh, one person didn't order alcohol. Who cares? Like they don't care, you know? Cause yeah. I, I, I've seen from like their perspective, like I'm like, these people make, they make enough. They're good. They're not, they're, and they're not even thinking about you, you know? Like, cause like, yeah. you know, as a double decider, I'm like, I don't think those bartenders are thinking about this one random. Person. Okay. I'm like thinking that they're judging like, there's that one person that's just drinking water and they're not ordering anything. Yeah. And like, I'm thinking that they're being judged by people. <laughs> oh, you've seen, you've seen it? In and like... I also like some bars have a sign that says like two drink minimum, you know? So I'm like, oh, okay, if there's a sign, then this is a rule that you have to follow. And if you don't follow the rule, then you're going to be judged or kicked out or something. Or there's going to be a problem. What about those virgin drinks? Like that, yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, but like someplace I'll get a virgin drink and it's just like disgusting. <laughs> it's like oh, nasty. I see. Oh, I see. I see what you mean. Because they're yeah. not specialized in that. Like you'd have to go to a place that like specializes in mocktails, you know. How do you feel about self-deprecating humor? Is it something that you don't do or is that you're cool with that? I do it sometimes and... At, at first, I always never liked it, but like, you know, learning the different personality types, I'm like getting used to it now. And because before I was like way too decider, I'm like, how could you say bad stuff about yourself? Don't you think more highly of yourself? Don't you want to be the best version of yourself? And like, I just took it way too seriously, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but like, now I'll like do it some because like Shan does it to herself I've noticed and she's a decider mm -hmm. but then it's like kind of it's kind of like the deciders sometimes are too hard on themselves and like the self-deprecating humor it's like feeding into that yeah. and then I'm just like oh maybe it's not as healthy to do it like that so I don't know <laughs> how do yeah. you yeah because I was just thinking if I was in a bar and someone's judging me for not drinking or I order like a virgin drink that's like non-alcoholic and then they're like judging me for that. 
then I would just reply back with the deprecating humor. I would just be like, oh yeah, I'm one of those weirdos that don't drink. You know, that's, yeah. all, that's, that's what I'll just say. And then like, what what can they say after, right? Like, or, um, okay, here here's one that could trigger deciders. I'm going to say it now because I could say it because I'm Asian. Um, <laughs> I remember I was working for like the Canadian federal election and there was this one guy, I think he was like an ESFJ or something. And then he was telling everyone and he was telling all the staff, because I was working as a supervisor, right? So I had a staff of 15 people. And he was like pointing at me and like the rest of the staff. It's like, shame on all of you. Sh you know, like, you know, like ESFJ likes to shame, like the FE likes to shame people, right? It's like, shame on you. There's a pregnant woman in the lineup and she should be going ahead first. Oh, okay. Shame on all of you. And I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm like, we usually do let the pregnant people go first. Just that there's, there's like hundreds, there's like thousands of people lining up. Is it like, you know, it, we're going to miss one person, you know, and if someone points it out, we'll definitely help them out. Right. You know, there's, there's so, <laughs> yeah, so many people lining up to vote. Like, it's impossible. The lineup is so long. It's impossible for us to see every single person in the lineup. Right. Um, So he was like, shame on all of you. So I, you yeah. know what I said to him? I said, I'm like, Hey man, look, look, look at me. I'm Asian. Look at my eyes are so small. I can, I can't see well. And, um, and, like, oh you know, my God. I, and I'm like, I, you know, I just, I didn't, didn't see her, you know, look at my eyes. And then everyone in lineup starts laughing their ass off. They're like crying, laughing. And then this guy who's like shaming us, like, cause you know, you know, with the FE, they look at the sp spectrum of values, right? And the spectrum of emotions. So he can't say anything because everyone in lineup is laughing their ass off at like my, my self deprecating joke. And then he's like, so short circuiting, right? Because like now no one's on his side. Because if you look at the FE spectrum, they're all laughing with me with, with like what I said, right? Obviously, yeah. the like woman like expedite her to the front of the line. Um, and then he just looks like take off that, like, you know, like and I was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, so you know, so it's, it's a time and place. I see I use this as a tool to to diffuse situations, the self-deprecating thing. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't think I don't actually see myself in that way, like I don't see it as a personal attack. I see I just see it as a tool um to 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 diffuse situations, especially when dealing with deciders, you know. Um yeah. So, so yeah, I know it sounds I, I know that's really offensive, like or not offensive, but like it's like how can you say that, you know, or like whatever, right? But you know, like double right. deciders, double deciders, right? So I'm like, you know Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's it's interesting because it's like a stereotype, Asian stereotype, and everyone's laughing and Maybe there is one Asian person in the line that feels bad or whatever, but it did diffuse the situation. No, dude, no one, no one felt bad. Everyone was laughing. They were crying, laughing. Yeah, when they joke. yeah, that's and, true. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe I, everyone was just having a good time. And it was yeah, I think time. like it was just like, you know, because I'm an EP, right? And EP says like, you know, ENFP, right? You know, ENFP is like the most trollish personality type. So, like. <laughs> You know we can get away with certain things more than other sure. types. Can. So I, I'm aware of that. So I do abuse that privilege. Uh, being an ENFP, I know it's weird that how, how does this ENFP get away with all the stuff they're saying? They're so offensive, and they're getting away with it, right? <laughs> but like it, 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 it kind of it, it just is. You know, people are like almost aware, like oh, this person's an ENFP, they're gonna say something stupid. You know, like it's 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 almost like innate, innately people are aware. You know, um, so. Anyways, um, getting off tangent here a little bit. Um, I would, I do want to talk about your social type next. Um, so okay. you hype yourself as a four. Um, save your friends with some space. Uh, save your specialization. Uh, can you share a little bit about uh, what you know made you come up come to that conclusion that hey, I'm probably a four. Yeah. Um. So like, if you were to ask me like what the most important thing in my life is, like that gives me happiness it's definitely like hanging out with my friends cooking them dinner and just seeing everyone like super happy and um yeah that's so that's always like a priority for me and um like when I am at work like I'm just super friendly with all my coworkers because you know how like some people are like oh I don't you know I'm there to work I'm not there to make friends or they're like you know um I, I I keep a distance between myself and others. I don't want them knowing my business or whatever. Right. But um, which I understand. But like, I uh, no, like I I want to be friends with all the people I'm working with, and like my patients, uh, 
I treat them like, I always treat them like they're a family member. Like if they're my grandma or they're my uncle or something like that, or they're my brother, you know? And I think that is good care when you treat them like they're your family. Like you want your family member to have the best care possible, right? If like your mom was in the hospital, you want them to have really good care. So if you treat them like they're your family member, then I think you give better care. And so I think that kind of goes along with the four and like treating everyone good and, you know, caring about people and um, yeah. But like, I, I kind of am wondering like if there's such a, I know this is kind of any, but like this, like the social type thing is new. Like what if there were social type jumpers? Like I'm a four jumper cause yeah. I, uh, am very like responsible too and hardworking and um like business mindset too so um yeah so i don't really see the specialization that much except that i'm a nurse and that's a specialization but like i'm also like doing way more than nursing like i'll do like social work stuff like um and then the, my and I'm like teaching my coworkers. I'm like, hey, you could do this, and they're like, doesn't the social worker do that? And I'm like, yeah, but like we're nurses, we can we can do that too. And then they're like, oh no, I'm okay. And I'm like, oh okay, because I'm thinking like, how can I help my patient the best way possible? And and maybe that's doing other wearing other hats and like maybe um, taking out the garbage, even though that's not my job, but like that is a better experience for the patient because they don't have smelly garbage in their room or um, doing social worker aspects is uh, helping them because otherwise they might have to wait until they see the social worker and I can just help them right there if I can. And and I'm also sleep less. So I'm like, I feel like a harder worker there too, um, which gives me, it, it, it like ups my responsibility quite a bit. So that's, that's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. So why aren't you a two? Because you just described responsibility in friends, that's that's twos, right? So why aren't you aren't you a two then? In that case, you know. Why am I not a two? Because it sounds like you're a two then. I don't <laughs> relate to the two like stories, like um the well w there was this like YouTube guy I forget his name, but he's like saying like the twos are like um pull yourself at the bootstraps and like, you don't know how hard I've worked and what I've, where I've came from and how much I suffered. And like, what is that? The uh, Tom Hermosi or whatever, um, like that sort of like, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you the best. And uh, like, that's not me at all. I'm way more laxed and friendly about it. Like, I'm not like, or like when when the teacher is like teaching Spanish and is like, like you're gonna eat Spanish and you're gonna you're gonna live Spanish and and half of you aren't even gonna make it and and like I'm like no like just like focus on teaching the Spanish and like why are you trying to motivate us like this like let's we're just here to learn Spanish you know. <laughs> I think twos come in many forms so I think maybe you've seen like a f like in Alex Hormozzi is like an ESTP right so uh, yeah so that's like one version of it and he's DI so I don't know I think you have to look for like DE number two to see what they're doing especially someone that's your type like a jumper ESTJ because yeah because uh, I think it's gonna look different than those other guys like I think every twos look different um you know Dave's a two also right so um yeah, I'm a two. So, um, I mean, they type me as either two or four. They don't know. But, like, that's what they said. They told me, you're either two or four. We don't know which one. But, like, I think I'm a, <laughs> but I lean towards two because you, if you look at my 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 life pile, it's like I'm wearing so many different hats all the time, you know, if in my life pile. And so are you. So and you 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 said it yourself. Like, you're doing all, you're wearing all these different hats, right? And then yeah. you said, you're like, I'm a jumper. I'm like, are you a jumper or you're just a two? Because you, you said you had both, right? Um, so, um, I don't know, so, something to think about, right? Maybe you're a two man. Like, I, I think like you, you could, you could be a two. Like, I don't know. Like I literally, when, when we go into anecdote land, I relate to the fours and the twos and like half of 
the stuff on the fours and half of the stuff on the twos. And I'm like, I don't think I'm either. I think I'm like, I think it's kind of like before we knew about the jumpers, like, why are they like acting like this? It's like, I think I'm, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. Um, Cause you, they were saying they weren't sure if you're a four or a two, you know? Well, cause I've saved your friends, which is obvious to me. I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm not a number one or three. I don't have, um, I don't have problem. Like I don't like like I have so like I have friends that I've known since I was like ten years old. I'm they're still I'm still friends with them right now. I'm almost forty, right? Like, 20, 29, like twenty nine year. I'm like thirty nine. I'm like twenty nine year friendship, right? I was like I have friends that like I just re I care about my friends a lot, right? And when I had to kick out some friends, I felt bad, but like not. But I was also surprised for the ones I did not feel bad about. So. Um, <laughs> um, but at the same time, also, I was like, if you look at your, I don't know what your life pile looks like, but for me, it's like, ever since I was a freaking elementary school, I'm the guy that always organized group activities. Like, I'm the one that's responsible for everyone. Like, where we're going to go, what time we're going to meet, uh, I call everyone. Um, you know, like, every time I get a job, uh, there's always, like, people come up to me, they start trying to groom me in, like, some kind of management position. Like, I remember I was working in this one gym, and one of my manager was like, already grooming me to, re to be her replacement when she retires one day, you know? And she's giving me all this, like, uh, responsibility to do, which is weird because I'm an EP and EPs are irresponsible, right? But then, like, I've actually had IJs tell me, like, I remember, I remember when I was going to college, they're like, Kendrick, can you organize this for us because you know you're responsible? And I, I'm like, oh, that's, like, the best compliment because I'm like, I'm an EP, you know? And, and you know, I have a lot of, like, irresponsible tendencies as an EP, right? You know? Um, yeah, like the fact that you can remember all of these schedules and and you know, interviews, and you don't forget. I mean, maybe you do forget, but like this, the stereotypical ENFP is not gonna, you know, remember. <laughs> like, yeah. don't read their emails, you know. <laughs> like, I've been doing this. How long have I been interviewing people for? Since two thousand eighteen, so it's like five years ago. Uh, yeah, I've missed. I've only forgot one interview since. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's and I, crazy. Felt hor I felt horrible. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean that could be the savior boss, also, right? So maybe I'm more, I'm more ENFP than you are, <laughs> dude. You you might be. You have double activated, um, you know, uh, o, like OE, right? Like you're so yeah. you're so like, and you're you're feminine sensory, so like yeah, you, you could be more ENFP. Like you look at your shirt, man. That's like an ENFP shirt right there. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> you know, it, so, yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what to say. <laughs> you, you, I mean, I can't argue with what you said, but um, <laughs> but I, I do feel, I do sense like you are responsible, though. I do sense that, like, just because you're chaotic doesn't mean you're respons, you're not irresponsible. You know, what yeah. I mean? Like it's, it's, you could be chaotic and responsible. Like that, those exist. It's like, I don't know if this is like a decider thing where it's like painting people as black and white, but it's like no, people, humans are complex and. Um, you know, um, this person did something bad, but it doesn't mean they're a bad person. It just means maybe, maybe they're having a bad day. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's really hard to say, but why don't we look at the other cross checks and see where okay. you are. So one of my, one of the weaker cross checks for the social type, in my opinion, is the love language. Because David Shan said that number one, yeah. their love language is words. But I've seen a lot of fours that also has words of love languages. And the, the difference between the ones and fours that I've seen for the love language is like for once they want recognition, while fours they want appreciation. So it's a little bit different from what I've seen when it comes to um, <clears throat> the ones and the fours. I think a lot of fours have words as love language. It's just that they want to feel appreciated, not not um not not like not doesn't not not recognize to put them above everyone else. Like yo, you're the best, you're the shit, right? Like not so much like that, but more like, oh, thank you so much. You know, you're so kind, you're so nice to everyone. You know, so that, like that kind of word. Um, but like, um, you we can still kind of use it as cross check because twos, for example, it is true they like acts of service. Um, because they're so overwhelmed, they're doing everything. So if someone comes and helps them out, it's like, oh, thank God, thank you. You know. So do you have acts of service anywhere in your love language, or is that something that's not as present for you? Oh, yeah. If I'm overwhelmed and a nurse helps me, like, that's so nice. And I love it so much. And then it makes me want to return the favor, too, for sure. But I also, like, I, I don't know, like, these anecdotes, like, I feel like I relate to everything. Like, I like to be recognized. I like to be 
like uh, I was nominated for a Daisy Award for, you know, exceptional nursing. And like that felt so good. Or when my colleagues were like, oh, my God. one of the patients that got discharged, he was asking about you and he said you were like the best nurse he ever had. And I was like, it, and then I'm like feeling like a high from that for like a couple hours. Like I feel so good about myself. Like, <laughs> um, and then I also, you know, want to be appreciated too. So I, I don't know, but my love language is all is like, is always like touch. Like I like, to be hugged and kissed and give me all the hugs and kisses and cuddles. Um, and then besides that, I like the, the words of affirmation. Like, I want to be told that, like, I love you and, and things like that. And then in like a relationship, the acts of service, I don't maybe appreciate as much or gifts. Uh, like that doesn't really do much for me. Um, so yeah, it's, What about it's quality more... time? quality of time is super important. Like I went on a date with someone and he was just on his phone the entire time. And I'm like, no, like I, I might as well be gone. Like I might as well not even be here. This, this sucks. So yeah, <laughs> that's like the biggest pet peeve. If I'm on a date and they're on their phone, like there's no second date. I think someone asked me to type them before and then they showed me a video of him with his brother. And his brother was just like smoking cigars and on the phone the whole time. And and I was like, oh my God, this guy's like double activated consumer or something, you know? So, so I feel like maybe the person you went out with on a date is like super consumed. And it's like, it's just like, maybe consume sleep, consume sleep, maybe, you know? Like Yeah. that's scary. Because like, if not, they're not paying attention to you, which is kind of weird if you're on a date, like what the hell is this? I just want to get to know each other. Uh, but um. Yeah. So, okay. You know what? Honestly, like talking to you and other people, it sounds like the love language thing right now, it's work in progress. It might not even apply because it, I don't think it does. yeah. So I think, I think that should be left alone for now. Like just leave it alone. And uh, cause I feel like that's, it's too messy. There's so many overlaps, right? Like it, it just, Yeah. doesn't, it just doesn't compute. So uh, maybe No. leave it alone for now, I, I, but it's good that I'm getting a chance to talk to you about it. And like other people, Yeah, it it's like Enneagram. Like it it maybe there's some overlap, but like people could be different Enneagrams for types. Like I don't think it it is indicative. I'm actually a big believer in Enneagram, but for a different reason. But I'll, you know, I, I don't want to talk about it right now. So, Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, like uh, uh, a certain type, like an ESTJ, there might be like six different Enneagrams, you know, like it, it doesn't like, if you're this Enneagram, you're this type, you know, like. Oh, yeah. You know what? I actually think certain types are certain Enneagram. It's not, it's not like, oh, I can be all nine. If, if like, you know. There's like not, you know, like you're an ESTJ, for example, not, not all the Enneagram can be an ESTJ. Like that's what I'm trying to say. Like Sure, it's, yeah. I think, I think that's BS. Like people said, oh, I'm this type and this type. I'm like, no, ah, okay, whatever. Uh, Yeah. but I, I like the core of the Enneagram because like, I remember when I went to college, um, I took this like second year psych course. And then I remember in the psych course, they showed us like a diagram of like the human personality. And they said like one third of your personality is Myers-Briggs and then one third. <laughs> One third is um your relationship with your parents growing up, and then one third is um your environment, right? So the one third about your relationship with your parents growing up, that's the anagram. That's like the base of the anagram is your relationship with your parents grow up. You became a certain type based on how your parents treated you as when you were a kid, you know? Mm -hmm. So I thought that was like, oh, that's the only system. Oh, yeah. 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 But You um learn your values and habits from them, for sure. Yeah, and it also depends on the pairing too. Like, do you have like two dominant parents or, or one dominant, one passive, one dominant, one assertive? You know, like it's like different depends on the mix also, uh, and how like they and also how they interacted with you, because like even if they're both aggressive, they might not be aggressive towards you. You know, so it's like there's so, so many factors involved, which I think is really cool about the human um psyche and stuff and how like we get Oh, like, yeah. the age. Um, but and anyways, that that's why I'm a big believer in the anagram, even though like David Chan like. trashes all the time i think it's actually like legit uh <laughs> do they i didn't know that yeah i've seen some videos where they trash it hard they also trash uh strength finder uh which i think is also legit but whatever you know it is what it is like uh, yeah i i think i think they're right though that people are not typing themselves correctly in those systems 
you know, because they, oh, okay. they did show a video of this one IP who said they're very empathetic and and <laughs> and stuff. And then they're like, and then they were, I remember they were shaking their heads like, what is this? You know, it's like this ISTP guy says he's good with like compassion and empathy and, you know. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. So I, I get that. Okay, I, okay, that kind of warrants being made fun of. Okay, that's true. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> I think yeah, you, people you, type themselves upside down for sure. Yes, yes, a hundred percent. Yeah. Um. So, I guess your social type right now it sounds like it's either two and four, and let's just leave it at that for now because we don't honestly we don't have enough evidence for either or. Uh, because yeah, you can, you can say either or. Um, either way, so two or four. Yes, that's where you're at. Um. Yeah, it's interesting though because like, I was talking with Shan through email, and I was like. The type that I, because she was saying that she did not want to be a one. Like, that was, like, the cringiest type to be. And, like, I didn't want to be an ESTJ. I was like, no, that's the one type I don't want to be. And then I ended up being an ESTJ. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, and then, and so, like, when the social types came out and I was, like, learning about them, I was like, oh, God, fours. Oh, they sound awful. Like, no way like I, I maybe I'm a one like I don't I, I don't want to be a four like that's that's like that felt vile to me and and I did not want to be a four and then when I found out that she didn't want to be a one I'm like oh I'm probably a four then <laughs> <laughs> you know what honestly the the description of the threes and fours is awful. Like I they 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 need better branding for those two social types. They just, <laughs> just make them sound bad. I mean, like like especially <laughs> the threes has the worst description. Basically, okay. all a bunch of irresponsible like you know people. I'm like I, I don't think they are actually like I mean they are more they are irresponsible at certain areas, right? But the areas they're responsible for, they're really responsible for. Sure. So, yeah. So yeah. I think calling them like super irresponsible, it's like, uh, that's like really bad branding. I think there's a better way to call them. Something. Oh, yeah. 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 Like the craftsman, I think sounds better or something. Right? The craftsman. Oh, yeah. The artisan. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, yeah, they are hyper-focused on that one thing. And then, you know, they're not concerned about the other stuff. They want to delegate to someone else or have someone else do it. But anyways, whatever. It's just a, you know what? It's new. It's new. I'm not... I'm not gonna shit on it because it's new. It's still working for me. <laughs> I, you know, you know what I do appreciate about what David Chan is doing is when they first released OPS, it was still not complete yet. And they kind of right. used the tribe to get more data to really hammer it out. Now, now it's pretty solid now. And the new stuff is like the social type, and that's like not solid yet. And it's cool. I think it's good that you send it out to the tribe, you know, let let things like hammer itself out, and eventually you'll have like this pure form. And you can't get the pure form without having people test drive it first right you know yeah i'm yeah. thinking about the jumper like like i am savior friends and then and then responsibility and i jump over specialization that's a two dude, dude that's a two <laughs> that's a two no, but it, it, it's it's like how an enfp jumper versus the estj jumper like you still have the te at the top or the any at the top okay. you know and you still have the the FI at the bottom or the SI at the bottom. Like it, I know you're thinking it's the same, but I think there is a small distinction and it, yeah. they're similar enough that like I, yeah, that's why we can't be type two or four because we're like some sort of two, four jumper, you know? Well, I think it's like the best one was like when they showed a video of Rami Malik and um, that other guy, that Robert Pattison, they're like exactly the same type. They're like play, consume, sleep, blast, both of them. And like, you know, same function stack, just different order. Because one's an ENTP jumper, one's a, you know, ESFJ jumper. And oh my God, it was so different. Like the fact that uh, Rami Malik had TI in the second, he had no problem talking about the TI whatsoever, even though they were exactly the same. So I guess what you're saying, yeah, it it, it, it is a big difference, even though it sounds similar. So maybe you're, you're onto something. We'll find out as time goes by. And, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right, Savvy, um, we'll wrap up the interview here because I have another one coming up. I, I tend okay. to schedule this one after another. But um, uh, I do appreciate you coming out here and sharing more about your life, sharing uh, where you've been uh, in terms of your journey with that SF sleep class and uh, just your transparency with your honesty also. I really appreciate that also. Like, you know, especially when you're talking about like taking the pill to kind of push away the emotions. I thought that was really honest of you. I really appreciate that. Uh, I also thought it was kind of interesting. Also, you're using the thing to fix the F. 
you know, like kind of like another ESCJ said the same thing. I'm like, oh my God, this is a thing. Like no, not no pun intended. Like using the thing to fix the the FI, like <laughs> you know. So yeah, good, um, good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kendrick. It was a pleasure. I had some good laughs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.